I'll try to see if I can remember what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so uh, my name is Björk, and uh, I am uh, with a Danish youth organization called Fearless Alliance, which means the Animals Alliance. Um, and uh, during this talk, I will uh, give some tips on how to talk to non-vegans about veganism and how to have effective conversations. Um, yeah. So, a little bit about myself first. Um, I started doing activism around five years ago, shortly after going vegan. And uh, after a couple of months, I applied for a job as a local coordinator in my city. It's called Odense. It's the third largest city in Denmark and has around 200,000 uh, 200, inhabitants. Uh, so just to give you a reference of the, uh, how large the city is. Um, so um, I became a local coordinator and I was responsible for recruiting and training volunteers as well as uh, holding events in our city. And um, in the beginning, it was mostly just me handing out leaflets. Uh, so on the left, you can see I'm, it's uh, during winter time. It's back when I wore glasses, so it's a long time ago. Um, and uh, I was handing out leaflets about um, fur animals. And on the right, I'm raising my hand to show how safe state my fingers are from leafletting for hours on end. And um, at the time, I didn't really think a lot about like what is effective or how to be an effective activist. Um, but I just knew that I wanted uh, the movement to grow in my area, and I wanted to post pictures of someone else uh, than myself on our Facebook page. Um, so, um, luckily, through my organization, I got some uh, inspiration to like you know TED talks to watch or books to read and. Um, you know, conferences to attend, and, and I learned a lot that I started implementing in our local group. So the first thing I did is uh, we started doing a lot of like video outreach where we would show people uh, the animals' conditions in factory farming. And we did this both uh, with iPads, as you can see on the left, and on the right with these um, virtual reality goggles that we got from them uh, with the help from the animal quality. Um, and um, other than that, we started doing um, some food sampling events. This picture is kind of small. We can see uh, our activists, uh, Lana and Ko, they're handing out vegan cookies. So uh, we started doing more events, getting more volunteers. You know, our, our movement was growing. We started doing bigger events that you know gained a lot of attention, and uh, we had so many people interested in listening to our message. So, naturally, this meant that we were having a lot of conversations. And uh, as animal rights activists, we want one of those conversations to be as effective as possible. Um, I have talked to a lot of vegans through my years as an activist, and what I've heard from them and what I remember for myself is that you know, you might be kind of scared getting started because a lot of us think that we have to be like this guy. Um, we have to, or we feel like, you know, we're not smart enough, we're not charming enough, we're not um, informed enough to be a uh, perfect animal advocate. Um, but uh, the good news is that you don't have to know all the facts. And uh, being a good animal advocate is more about uh, being a good conversationalist. And this is something that we definitely can and should, um, you know, try to get better at because we owe it to the animals to be as effective as we can be. Um, I'll try to give some tips, but it cannot. This uh, subject cannot be covered in thirty minutes, so I really recommend to do your own research. Um, I really recommend these three books: uh, *Change of Heart* by Nick Cooney. He's a vegan activist as well. Um, how to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And uh, if you're really interested in human psychology, uh, to better understand people's uh, reactions, um, The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. And actually none of these books were written specifically uh, for animal rights activists, but uh, they've taught me a lot and uh, something that I've used in my activism. Yeah, I don't want to sound like too cheesy or anything, but um, some of these books, or these three books, 
have made me a more uh, empathetic and tolerant person. And while empathy and tolerance definitely is something that's going to help you with your activism, it's also um, strengthened the relationships in my personal life. So before we get into how to be an effective conversationalist, um, I feel I need to stress the importance of sustainability. Um, so what I mean is that we need to be sustainable in our activism. If you're doing activism where you come home and you're super stressed out and you're tired and you're depressed, um, chances are you're not going to want to continue doing that for that long. Um, so I really hope you ask yourself if uh, you can do some kind of activism that is less emotionally straining for you and uh, makes you excited to be doing activism. Because if we look after our own mental health, we can be a voice for the animals for many years to come. So the first thing you'll be very happy to know is that you don't have to be an expert. And actually, not knowing the answer to something or not knowing the answer to everything is going to make you more relatable. Um, we as vegans are kind of seen as weird freaks. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're not like other people. But we really want people to understand that we're just like them. Like, in most ways, we're just like them. We care about animals, and that's why we went vegan, or we want to inspire others to do the same. We don't want them to think that we're kind of some kind of super, uh, superhuman <laughs> that knows all the answers to everything. And if you do get asked um, a question that you don't know the answer to, you can just say, you know, that's a really good question. I've never thought about that. Um, I can research and then get back to you if you're interested. And you can, you know, exchange emails or whatever. Um, the point is that people don't remember facts, they remember how you make them feel. Um, and, um, Yeah, so if we can show them that we are just normal people that want to inspire others to um, help animals, it's going to be a more positive conversation. Um, this brings me to my next point, uh, to make people like you. This is uh, really important and can be done in different ways. One of them is uh, to focus on common values. So instead of um, talking about the ways that we differ from each other, uh, you can focus on your common values. And as animal advocates, we're so lucky that most people actually do care about animals. So we can uh, talk about like, you know, I'm just like you, I really like animals. That's actually what led me to go vegan, led me to become an animal rights activist. And, uh, Remember your own carnism. This is something Melanie Joy says a lot. Um, remember back when you used to eat meat and uh, understand that people don't eat animals because they're bad people. They eat animals because they think it's necessary, they think it's normal, and they think it's natural. Um, and you know, everyone around them eats animals. People need to feel good about themselves. And um, you're not going to help animals by making, making people feel bad about themselves or shaming them for eating animals. And um, the point I kind of want to make with this is that uh, people will only listen to your message if they don't feel attacked. If, you, if people feel attacked by you, they go into like a defensive mode. And when they're defensive, they're not going to be listening to your message and uh, they're trying to protect their own ego and you're not going to have a positive conversation. Less is more. So vegans are generally very passionate people. And uh, we want to share all the knowledge that we've acquired through our five years or two or three years as vegans in a five minute conversation. So we want to tell people about, you know, health and environment and ethics and philosophy and we want them to go home with like stacks of books to read when they get home. That's the dream, right? Make them go vegan after one conversation. Um, 
but um, that can be very overwhelming and stressful for people. So um, when it comes to materials and also when it comes to talking, uh, less is more and uh, try to focus on uh, quality over quantity. Um, so I have this picture of uh, Cassie from the Community League in the United States and they're doing a table event at a conference. And then uh, notice how the table is very clean. They have like these clean lines. This is really important because if you bring all of the information that you have on everything that has anything to do with veganism, people will feel overwhelmed and might not approach you because they're just not ready for that amount of information. Um, so, um, yeah, try to, try to focus on three or four brochures and focusing on a specific campaign um, so that people will want to approach you. And uh, when they do approach you, try to, to make it so that they're the ones talking the most. Um, you can, you know, ask questions and try to steer the conversation in the direction that you want the conversation to go to. Um, because people believe what they say and not what they're told. They're going to remember something that they said themselves, something that they believe, and not something that they were told. They can't remember the facts that you tell them. Uh, so an example of this is uh, last year I was at a festival and I was talking to a guy, he had watched our uh, I Animal video and he was kind of upset afterwards and he was like, you know, I know it's horrible that animals are treated this way, but, and I know we all heard some kind of version of this, um, I need protein. Um, and instead of like talking his ear off and mentioning all of the vegan protein sources, um, I just asked him, well, do you think that you can get your protein needs met on a vegan diet? And then he was like, yeah, yeah, of course. I know, you know, there's beans and, and lentils and yeah, peanut butter. I eat a lot of peanut butter and, and there's nuts and seeds and, and I heard about this thing called Satan and he just kept going on and on. Um, and he ended up saying, yeah, so I guess I could go vegan, or maybe I could at least like cut back on my meat. And I could just end up saying like, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> you know, more power to you. Um, so it was a very positive conversation, and I'm sure that you remember that because, you know, we think that we're so smart ourselves. Um, yes. Focus on low-hanging fruit. So uh, this is actually something that I saw at a VegCon webinar that I attended. And it's from, I don't remember which country it's from, but it's from a vegan challenge in a specific country. And they asked the people doing the vegan challenge. Um, so for those of you who don't know, a vegan challenge, challenge is where people challenge themselves to eat vegan for you know 20 to 30 days. And they get some inspiration and help to do it. Um, and they found that most of the people doing the vegan challenge were vegetarians, uh, but they also showed like how many animals uh, each dietary group um, eats, or like how many lives uh, each dietary group costs. So for the omnivores, it's 27 animals per year, vegetarians 13, uh, vegetarian 2, and vegan 0. Uh, I think this is really important for us as activists because we have limited time and limited energy to uh, inspire people to go vegan. So it's clear from this that if we want to be as effective as possible, we should focus on inspiring omnivores to go vegetarian. That's going to help the most animals. Um, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't uh, ask vegetarians to go vegan or you shouldn't inspire people to go vegan. Um, every time I meet a vegetarian, I would say like, wow, that's so great that you're be vegetarian, thank you so much for helping animals. Have you ever considered going vegan? But if the person I'm talking to is just like, no, there's no way in hell that I'm never gonna do that, I'm not gonna like keep pushing and be like, yeah, but you have to, you have to, it's so important. Um, because I'd rather uh, spend time, spend five minutes talking to an omnivore who is interested in cutting back on their meat but needs inspiration than to be arguing with a vegetarian for 10 minutes. And this is because, you know, 
during an event, I want to talk to as many people, I want to inspire as many people as possible. Um, and uh, that's why I usually just talk to people for about five minutes, because I'm just there to plant the seat. Um, you have to remember that you know, your job is not to make people go vegan after one conversation. Your uh, job is to find out where they are on your journey and help them uh, move on. So, like, if they're, you know, omnivores, you can ask them to come back in a minute. If they're already coming back, ask them to come back more or ask them to go vegetarian. <laughs> um, so, what's the best uh, motivation to get people to come back in a minute? So, we got did this uh, big report on Brit's attitude towards uh, veg lifestyle. And they were asked uh, what the reason would be for them to give up meat. And 44% um, said that it was the concern of animal welfare, and 41% that it was for general health reasons. And there may not be like a big difference between these two numbers, but from a personal experience, it's a lot easier to talk about ethics than to talk about uh, health. Um, I think animal advocates. Uh, might feel like they have to be experts on nutrition to be good animal advocates. Because I've experienced conversations going into like, well, how much vitamin A is there in 100 grams of carrots? And I'm, I don't know how to answer that question. And I, you know, you can't expect yourself to know everything about nutrition. So if you can just focus on it, you can agree that a plant-based diet can be nutritionally adequate and meet all your needs on a plant-based diet, the conversation just comes down to ethics. And it's much easier to talk about, you know, it's not okay the way we're treating animals. Don't you think it's sad? Aren't you upset to see that? If they're completely, uh, like, very negative towards uh, veganism, and they're like, no, it's not natural, it's not, there's no way, um, you can always talk about meat production. Because Everyone can agree that eating more um, fruits, vegetables, and legumes is going to be healthy. Um, the next one is to acknowledge their efforts. And if you meet a vegan or vegetarian, you need to make them proud. Um, most people that go veg go back to eating not veg. Um, it's really sad, but may be understandable considering they might be you know the only one in their family or the only one in their social group that's vegan and they feel you know they feel isolated they feel not alone so when they do meet someone who's vegan you need to be uh, you know get them excited about being vegan just be like wow it's so great you're, you're vegan that's awesome and maybe ask them like well why did you go vegan so that they can remind themselves why they're doing what Doing. We want them to feel proud and excited about veganism. And even if they're not vegan or vegetarian, every little helps and encouragement is a lot better than shame. So if I meet a person and they say that you know they, they actually do meat three Mondays or they try to cut back on their meat, I'm always super excited. I'm like, really? That's awesome. That's so great. Um, you know, if everyone uh, did their best at cutting back on meat, we would have a completely different world for uh, animals today. Because we need to cultivate empathy. And um, if people feel excited about, you know, doing what they're doing, cutting back on their meat, they, they might be like, yeah, it is actually kind of cool that I'm doing that. I'm, I'm helping animals and I'm helping the environment. And maybe I should even, you know, cut even more back on doing like maybe like two or three meat three days a week. It's a lot easier to get, you know, seven people to have a one meat three day a week than to get a one person to go vegetarian. Um, so you also have to show them the how of veganism. Um, as advocates, we focus a lot of about the why, like, uh, you know, you should do it because of ethics and because of the environment and because of health. Um, but even if people have all the good arguments for why to do it, they still need information on how to do it. So one thing you can do is uh, give them a recipe that they can go home and try. 
or tell them about a vegan restaurant or a store where they can buy a vegan item. Um, and don't be afraid to ask a very direct question at the end of a good conversation. Um, so you can say like, um, so are you going to try this recipe that I gave you? Because if people have uh, said yes to you, they're going to feel more obliged to do it when they come home. So getting that uh, confirmation or getting a yes is going to be can be uh, very helpful to getting them to actually uh, go through with what they want to or what they said that they wanted to do. And uh, at the end of a conversation, remember to thank people. And you can thank them for their time, for their honesty, for their interest in uh, the topic, uh, for their openness towards you, or just for an interesting conversation. And you can do this even though um, you have like even though you have haven't agreed on anything. Uh, even when people tell me like, you know, veganism is just not something I would ever do. Um, I'll just say, like, oh, thank you for taking the time to talk to me, and thank you for your honesty. I really appreciate it. Because I want them to like me. I want them to have a good impression on vegans uh, and, and hopefully veganism. And um, if all else fails, uh, if, you, if you talk to a person who's just super rude and trying to pick a fight, um, try to de-escalate the situation. Uh, just politely tell them that, you know, I'm just here because I'm trying to inspire people to cut back on meat. Uh, if, if you're not interested in that, that's totally fine and, you know, have a good day. Um, again, there's no reason to be arguing with a person who's clearly not interested when there might be 10 people walking past that actually want to get information on how to cut back on their meat. If they're, if they're like honest that they, you know, they don't want to cut back on meat, um, you could try it, but they're still like, uh, they're not rude, they're still, um, you know, nice to you, and you can try to get them to sympathize with veganism. And what I mean by this is, um, you could ask them like, well, even though you personally wouldn't go vegan, do you understand why others might want to? Because if we can get them to understand why other people go vegan, uh, it's going to make it easier for the people in their life to go vegan. So if in, in the future, you know, their their sister or mother or whatever goes vegan, um, they will be supported and uh, they will understand why people, uh, what, what reasons people have to go vegan. Remember that people can support a vegan world without being vegan themselves. So this is a picture of my uh, colleague Giovanni. Uh, she's talking to two young men, and I was thinking that we could do like a case example of uh, some of the things we've talked about so far. Um, so let's say you talk to uh, a person, and they tell you that uh, you know they only eat free range or they only eat organic meat. Um, what do you think that people are trying to convey? When they say that, what are you, what do you, what message do you think that they're trying to tell you? Uh, that they care about them. Yes, exactly. So the first thing we can do is, you know, ask them a question. So usually I would ask them like, so what makes you eat um, or buy organic meat? Is it uh, because of the animals? And in my experience, most people do it because it's their understanding that animals in organic farming are treated you know, heavenly. they have the perfect life and they care about animals. So of course, they'd rather support that than something cool. Um, and, you know, so at this point, you need to acknowledge their efforts. So tell them like, it's so great that you think about animals when you're doing your grocery shopping. You know, animals need all the empathy that they can get and um, because they have a really hard time. Um, so at this point, you're thinking, I want to tell them that organic meat isn't all that great, but, you know, I don't want them to get defensive. I still want them to like me. So how do I do that? Um, well, you can remember your carnism. Remember when you used to eat animals 
and you know you weren't that person, you were just misinformed. So I'll just tell people like, you know, I'm like you, I'm exactly like you. I really care about animals too. And um, for years I thought that animals were treated nicely uh, in factory farming. And I found out that it's not the case. Um, but luckily, we can eat vegan. We can eat vegan foods because uh, then we're sure that the animals have not been made to suffer. <laughs> and then we can try asking them a direct question. Um, have you ever uh, considered like cutting back on your meat uh, to help the animals that, that you care about so much? Um, or is it something that you already do? And a lot of people I talk to will say like, either they'll say like, yeah, I have like a meat day a week, and then we can you know talk about you know what foods to eat, and and you know it's great that you eat the uh, meat free once a week. Um, or they'll say, um, yeah, I would really like to, but I just don't know how. And then the conversation can evolve into like the how of vegans, or we give them a recipe, inspire them to you know uh, take action. Um, so my last tip is to uh, consistently evaluate your activism. And uh, there's really no perfect guide to being, a, you know, the best activist ever, but I hope that these tips have inspired you, given you some ideas. And um, if you do experience, like, a negative conversation, that's totally fine. It's something we all do. And um, I encourage you to think of every conversation as, like, an opportunity to learn and to grow and and to um, you know figure out what to next for the next conversation you're having like oh what could I what could I have said what how could I make that conversation more positive um, and to evaluate if uh, you've been successful uh, you can ask yourself well first of all did the person I was talking to like me and did I talk about the cause and if you if they liked you and you talked about veganism they're going to have a more positive attitude towards veganism, and when they go home, they will probably continue their reflection on this subject. And uh, if you've done these two things, you're golden. I would also really like to recommend this uh, book by Melody Joy called uh, Beyond Beliefs. I saw that they're actually selling it outside, um, but it's really important for us to understand carnism and understand the defense mechanisms to um, to know that you know even if people are defensive and rude, it's not because you know it's not you personal personally that they're you know, angry at. It's just the defense mechanisms of their carnism, and um, it's not. It doesn't mean that you're doing a bad job. And uh, lastly, I would just encourage you to get out there because most of what I've learned has just been from experience. You know, having really bad conversations and thinking, oh, what could I have done better? Or, you know, being with other activists and listening to what they say and thinking like, oh, that sounded really good. I'm going to use that next time. And making like notes to yourself of, you know, how to phrase things or topics to talk about. Um, yes. So just to recap, be nice, ask questions, find out what people are doing and help them with the next step. Acknowledge people's efforts and cultivate empathy and show them how. And uh, yes, I really hope that you are inspired to become part of our ever-growing um, ever growing uh, activist group and uh, getting out there and inspiring others to uh, come back on their meat or even going vegan. And uh, if you have any further questions, Um, I 
I knew someone who was actually working for uh, the organization at the time. And uh, he was like, hey, you want to call me today? Um, and I was like, sure, why not? If you help animals, I'll do it. And that's actually a really important tip to like get people to get active in the movement, uh, to ask them like, hey, would you would you like to help me with this uh, to help animals? Because um, at least in Denmark, there's been like a report that you know I think it was like seventy percent of people said that they would like to be um, you know become active in some kind of political organization if they're just asked. So don't be afraid to ask. Does your organization like stand in the street or in the city center? Because in my organization, you would like to stand in the city center in Brussels, quite a large city. And I thought, I think that it wasn't so effective. So you do like, um, you stand in supermarkets or restaurants? No, no? you do like in the street in the city center. Okay, and uh, you don't think it's effective because you didn't talk to a lot of people, or? Yes, but also we like collected signatures for a petition. Um, it was an online petition. Um, like at these uh, bigger events, we like collected like one week signature, and in the city center it was like one week or three signatures, and not so much. Okay. Well, it, it might have to do with the, like, uh, I don't know how large your city is, like where you come from, um, because, um, you know, bigger cities are going to be more progressive, more open towards veganism. People are going to, you know, they've, they've heard about veganism or they've tried vegan foods. Um, so that's why I like, started off with telling, like, <laughs> you know, the city I come from is the third largest in Denmark. So it's going to be different smaller cities or different in different countries um, and then and I think it's really important to kind of um, tailor your message to your audience so if people are like they don't know what veganism is maybe don't be like hey go vegan maybe try to talk about you know uh, how animals are treated and if they want to help animals they can cut back um, because you know when I talk to like old people I don't tell them like don't eat honey. Like they're they're not gonna they're not gonna think that's an issue. Uh, when I talk to young people who are like, you know, oh they eat vegan like five times a week, um, I say, oh what about six times a week? You know, kind of tailor your message to fit your audience. I think did that answer the question? Kind of because yeah, this was for our campaign, it was like uh, I think for farms campaign so and it's quite a large stigma on the topic for us, for our organization, but also in the media and the things that we are. Maybe our organization is not so known, so you know. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to talk afterwards, uh, I would really like to you know, learn more about it and try to help you with something. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.